What's up, party people? It's yeah. Honest Trailer Commentaries, the show where we talk about our show that talks about other shows. Hopefully you watched the show that we're about to talk about before you watch this show. Uh, if not, hit pause, go watch that show, come back, watch us talk about the show. Or some of you just like to watch this show without having seen the show that we're about to talk about, and that's cool too. I'm Joe, Dan, Lon, Danielle, hey. Uh, Shows. If you watched SJU this morning, you know that Spencer J. Gilbert is done with his responsibilities as a father <laughs> and has returned to Screen Junkies, but uh, he didn't see Mortal Engines. So. I think you mean yesterday morning, Joe. True. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I ruined the illusion. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Spencer came yesterday and maybe this morning. <laughs> I don't know because uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think our same shirts ruin it because they do track them. Uh, I guess. Right. Yeah, they I'm do. in my charting ensemble still. Yeah, 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 that was yeah, Spencer's yeah. last paternity benefit was not having to watch Mortal Engines. <laughs> yes, it was. Although I... Uh, I gotta have a baby. I, I, I sent him a, a text uh, uh, while watching this movie and I said... I think you only had a child to avoid watching Mortal Engines. And he said, is that the thing where the cities are tanks? No, I want to watch the heck out of that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, was this movie amazing? I leave it to the table. No. It was a lot of movies. Um, I, you know, I love silly, and this is big and silly and incomprehensible, and that is everything I love. I also wanted to punch this movie in the face. Understood. <laughs> yep. I uh, like this movie. I, I recognize that it has... A, a pretty major problem, which is that you don't get to know or care about anyone who's in it, which usually would be the sort of thing that, that would be like, that's not good. But the the fact that the ambition and the scale is so huge and they're leaving it all out there and it's not holding anything back, like I begrudgingly came to admire what they were trying to take Just on. Just pure audacity. It, it yeah. is it is throwing everything at the wall. It is not holding anything back. And, and a, a thing that a lot of the movies that we watch not even just for the show. A lot of 2018, 2019 movies, you feel like they're they're trying to set you up on it. It's going to be a shared universe. It's going to be a franchise. We're doing all of this work to kind of set the stage for more adventures. Not this movie. No. This movie is like... It put the whole series in one movie. Dump a yeah. dump truck worth of every story element we can think of in this one movie. And, like, I, I, I like that. It, it, it's, it's crazy. It's bananas. It's not emotionally satisfying, but I enjoyed it for what it was. <laughs> Danathan? I was writing the honest trailer for this movie in my head while watching the movie, mm -hmm. which is ironic because then I went on vacation last week and didn't really help write yeah. this honest trailer. <laughs> but you can't help so it. You go. You, yeah. The act of watching this yes. movie is thinking about how you would make fun of this. About movie. 30 minutes in, I was just like, okay, we have to, We I pushed hard for us to do this movie because this is a movie much like Robin Hood. Just like, we can't live in a world where we haven't done the honest <laughs> yeah. trailer yeah. for this movie. I agree. And I, I, I know uh, a lot of people, you're not doing, you're doing this this week? And it's like, yeah. Yes. Sometimes honest trailers has to get back to its roots and just do something dumb. Whether or not it's attached to something on the schedule or not. Like, I have nothing productive to say about Bumblebee. I really, I really don't, really don't. I have nothing funny or witty it's or clever. It's perfectly fine and it's, sweet. Yeah, I, I, I really, really don't. So I, it's much more appealing to find a movie where there is something fun yeah. to say or do. Yeah, right. the public tends to demand that we do movies that they love. Right. And like I yeah. get that, that you want to see like more a celebration of stuff that you love, but those are a lot harder, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's so a every, lot easier to do stuff that's just terrible. Every now and just got to yell at something. And it's they're better. Yeah. This is way yeah. better than the trailer we'd make for Bumblebee. Yeah, the I Bumblebee promise trailer. You that. Yeah, yeah, let's do a quick preview of what the Bumblebee trailer would have been, then we'll jump into this. 80s. Get ready for nostalgia. Oh. Take players. He's sure. Oh, look at his cute face. <laughs> why, cute why, do they, why do they look so different than they'll look in 10 or 15 years? <laughs> the other movies were bad, but this one's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like, what yeah. do you. We do a lot. Of, we, we have to do a lot of movies that we. Like don't have as big a take on because they're big movies and we we we're st we, we need to stay in business. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think sometimes when we have a chance yep. to sometimes maybe skip a, a quote unquote bigger one. Yeah, my, to do something like this. My only regret uh, going into this trailer is that we very recently already used the this movie is completely overwhelming take with Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. Had I known, I know <laughs> I would have I would have adjusted. 
yeah. uh, and saved it for this. But that I think, said, I think that's a trend that we're going to just start. These event movies are just getting bigger and yeah. bigger and, and dumber. longer mm. and dumber, and, and so I think that's a take that's going to come feel up like a lot. Endgame will be a very chill character piece. Yeah, yeah. let's mm -hmm. watch this trailer. Oh, up there. Starring this trailer. <laughs> <laughs> From Peter Jackson, the visionary director of Lord of the Rings, comes a film ten years in the making because he shunted it off to his storyboard and effects guy to make The Hobbit. Well, that's one more thing I can blame on The Hobbit movies. Mortal Engines. Welcome to a post-apocalypse Earth, a world that still seems pretty okay looking. Nevertheless, <laughs> humanity is forced to fight over limited resources by using tons of resources. Thanos would not be happy with no. this. I'm gonna pause. Yeah. I, I do I do want to address this really good. It, it's very this whole post-apocalyptic world is very confusing because they tell you basically all of civilization was wiped out in this one moment. Mm-hmm. But they have more technology than we have today, so it's not post. It's like it's like better than it was pre-apocalypse. Different technology because like I mean, they can cell resurrect phones, the dead. Cell phones are in a glass case, and people don't know what minions are. But they, yes, they can also build cyborg dead people. Yeah, at some they point they can bring the dead back to life. They can build these flying cities and flying machines. They can build weapons that are more like like th this is a more technologically yeah. advanced society than ours. At society. some point after the apocalypse, Bioshock came true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's like everything reverted back to like. The, the Industrial Revolution rise of steam power and then started going forward again, but went way further than we are today. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like the steam future. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's Post good. steam modernism. Post steam modernism. <laughs> Live on massive mobile cities that devour smaller mobile cities German. in a harrowing game a of hungry, German hungry villa. hippos. <laughs> Except for the humans that live in sky cities, or in mobile home parks, or in just normal cities. Which will make you wonder why parts of humanity have decided to live on massive mobile cities <laughs> that consume smaller mobile cities in a harrowing game of hungry, hungry hippos. Well, that's what happens when the Earth's crust gets shattered into a thousand pieces. Is it though? <laughs> the world is threatened by an ancient weapon. The only thing standing in its way are these extremely attractive people. This and the these most extremely attractive people. Yes. Yeah. And some time. also these extremely attractive people whose names you won't remember, except for Hester, because her undead cyborg dad won't stop shouting it. Hester! <laughs> 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 Together. Okay, pause. Pause. Um, <laughs> I've been yelling Hester all week, yeah. and my wife is like, what are you doing? I didn't know anything about any of this going into the movie. No, Nothing. No, I'd seen the trailer, and that was did. it. And, and when they introduced the undead cyborg dad, I'm like, okay... Well, it's, it's, it's both, I'll, this doesn't make sense in the technology, right? and what is this doing in this story? That's yeah, the thing. Why is this here? I'm like, okay, so this is the big bad. Okay. Sure. And then the, like 20 to 30 minutes of the movie is about him pursuing Hester, and then mm. blah, 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 and then he dies. And Spoilers. then they just keep going <laughs> yeah. on with the rest of what they were. It, it was so obvious, and it, it's why I don't envy anyone that has to adapt a popular book yeah. or book yeah. series. You could tell this was a character who worked in the book, who had no business being in the movie yeah. adaptation, and yet they knew that if they didn't include him, the people that read the book would be mm -hmm. so upset. So they put him in, and I, to, to my eyes at least... He really had no bearing on the film. No, well, he could have been bombadilled, but yeah. he was not yeah. necessary yeah. for the plot of the story. I, I mean, I, a part of me does imagine that, like, it might have really appealed to Peter Jackson, who likes zombies yes. and creepy horror mm. elements. Like, he might have really felt strong about, I want to keep this element in this story. But you got to do more to, like, really integrate it into the story. This is, it's a, it comes totally out of left field. He sort of comes and interrupts the movie, <laughs> and then he's gone, and it yeah. doesn't matter anymore at all. Yeah, I, uh... I feel like there were, there are two ways where it could have been like okay that could be a thing. One is if you keep it 
he's the undead. He's in constant pursuit of Hester or whatever. You lose all the stuff about Hugo Weaving setting him free and loosing him on because that stuff was dumb. Doesn't make and any sense. And maybe you just have this like strange question mark element. Like, what is this thing? Where is it going? Mm-hmm. Why is it yeah. picking people up and going Hester <laughs> and then like flinging them? Uh, you know, like what? He's like this weird chaotic element. What's he gonna be? Maybe that works. But like, like you say about adapting a book, it. Because later they just we'll, we'll hit it in the trailer. If they're just gonna do Star Wars anyway, maybe undead cyborg dad just needs to be her C three PO. But they have a weird relationship because he actively wants to kill her and make her a robot. And and that's a weird relate. You know, maybe we just sit with that this is relationship. All really in the movie. Yeah, we're I'm not, making, like, we're not making any of this up. You know, I'm I'm like maybe. Maybe that's interesting if he's just there and she's like, yeah, he's my adopted dad. He wants he wants to kill me, but for my own good. And everyone's like, okay. okay. I'm sure in the book there I'm are sure there is. plenty of reasons why this character was well, the- A, beloved, and B, made sense. I'm sure. I'm not attacking that. Nope. I just mean in this movie. Yeah. Nope. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I shouldn't. I shouldn't need. I shouldn't need an index. I shouldn't have to no. go back and read the book. Like okay. the, the movie. movie is the yeah. movie, and the movie has to work on its own. Yes. It's it's the first book from a series of. There are four books in the Mortal Engine series. He's, the, the do they same, go? Do they get less mortal as the books I go? Know, yeah, they, yeah, they're, they're, I they're, they like die. Nine of them. No, well, because there's four books in the main series, and now the author's going back and doing prequels that are set between the Got destruction it. of civilization and ah. Mortal Engine. So, so well, they're but, building yeah, the cars. They're building the big tanks. Right. So I feel that probably is. What it is, but I, I feel like there, maybe they had to introduce this idea of resurrected men for later adventures where it'll tie in more. But we're obviously never going to get to see, no, based on no. the popularity of this film, those three are never going to get made. No. So uh-uh. it'll just remain a question mark for uh-uh. all time. Why? And, why did the zombie dad have to be in? And here? of course, if you don't want to read the books, you can always go to the Mortal Engines Wikia, powered oh. by fandom. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take on <laughs> professional bad person Hugo Weaving in a special effects filled race. Wait, did I just say undead cyborg dad? You did. <laughs> he even narrates the intro. The age of the great predator <laughs> cities. This movie is ridiculous. <laughs> pause, pause, pause. Stephen uh, Lang, the great actor Stephen Lang played. Really? Played, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Plays, he's playing Shrek right there. So A, props to John for his spot on Shrek impression. Yeah. yeah. Who knew? Um, why did the undead cyborg dad narrate the beginning of the movie? Like, it's, that should have been the main guy, right? That should have been the or historian. Or Hugo yeah. Weaving. It seems yeah. like yeah. Hugo Weaving, he's the historian. He's driving the story in the beginning. Or it's Peter no Jackson. It's a Peter, well, it's a it's a <laughs> wingnut film. Just have Galadriel do it. I yes. don't care, but like. <laughs> the they would like. Did did that opening narration do anything to help us understand the world as we came no. into it? Then drop no. it. It made the logos easier to sit through. Uh, it's also <laughs> like <laughs> we're a lot of them. <laughs> He's speaking about his current, like the age in which he lives. He's dead and has no memory anyway. How does he even know this is the age of the Predator cities? What context is he? Is he he's in, in our world? Well, hey, Lon, look at this story. Hey, let me. This is weird, right? Gather. Today for my book report, I bring you the legends. Gather even, around, assholes. Does, doesn't even make sense. He would be narrating to us. What's the context? I don't. Know. Oh man, uh, I will. If if you want a, a little behind the scenes look at how the sausage was made uh, in the original cut of this, it was my uh, supreme wish that. Everything he says goes in that run, and it was about a minute long. Every line of dialogue that Shrike speaks yeah. in the film uh-huh. was in that run. It was about a minute, and I, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and we we came to a compromise where it's just the screaming. <laughs> You know what? We're better off for it because I was wrong. I was wrong. I admit, uh, maybe just a, a solid minute and a half. Honestly, we should probably upload that separately as an addendum because it is hilarious. <laughs> like, it, I, it, it, I, it's not maybe not perfect for the honest trailer, but very funny. I mean, I was not here last week, so the first time I saw anything of this was the first cut of the movie, and about ninety seconds into the Shrike dialogue run, I'm like, did did the editors fall asleep? Did we export the wrong timeline? I specifically instructed Kevin to do all of it. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. 
<laughs> um, well, thank you, Kevin. I was running uh, again I, uh, on me, running a little late on this draft. So Kevin was like, "What can I work on?" And I was like, "We're gonna we're gonna compare it to Star Wars, and we're gonna make fun of Strike a lot. Mm. Do those things." Okay. Um, and I, I think we found a good spot. Mm. All the screaming, it works. Yeah. Let's go. Ridiculous. Gear up for a visual feast of incredible art design and intricate detailed concepts. Then choke on an entire series worth of these things, all crammed into one movie. You're just a skivvy from the lower tiers. If those dim-witted spanner heads beat you to the bins again, you'll be back to cleaning the bogs. What the hell is Southies? <laughs> Scabs. They're the Scabs, of course. The Anti-Traction League of Shanquo. Nothing can stand in the face of this. Not the battle hammers of Archangel, not the howitzers of Panzerstadt. <laughs> Not even the guns of the anti-tractionists. All right, pause. Bravo. <laughs> no leaving. First yeah. of all, first he's of all, he's nailing the yeah. crap out of that. Oh nailing God. it. That's he's, impossible he is, dialogue. He is nailing it in this movie. <laughs> there's, there's something to be said, and um, I was thinking about this a lot watching this because actually Zach Stentz tweeted this, and I was like, man, yeah, this is. A, Make sure you follow Zach on Twitter because he's just mm -hmm. got some cool stuff to say. Smart guy. He does. But he was talking about just uh, sprinkling color into your dialogues to just ex to build your world. And Star Wars does it so well. Mm -hmm. uh, served with your father in the Clone Wars, moving on. Okay, now I know you're a vet. My dad was a vet. Uh, and there was a thing called the Clone Wars. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Emperor has dissolved the Imperial Senate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now I know there's an Imperial Senate, mm -hmm. and I know that the Emperor uh, is a badass because he dissolved them. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Every... This movie also could have done, like, his last speech there where he's just naming things. It's like, okay... Now I know that there are other super weapons, maybe, and he's so cocky he thinks he's true. But there's so much other stuff. Scav, skip, well, selfies, yeah, and I'm pods. Sure some of that is set up early in the movie, but it's the it's the it's the idea of like it's just a constant stream of just yeah. like having to set yeah. up and then recall yeah. and re-reference. It's eight, too it's, much. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's way lot. too much. I mean, every line of dialogue in the movie practically is like they took out all the nouns and replaced them yes. with like fantasy nouns and it's like too much. You, you gotta you gotta be careful and judicious. A little bit of that is world building. Thing. It's like, you know, Leia calling Han a nerf herder and like, oh, there's an animal called a nerf herder. Got, Got it. it. Whereas this, it's like we didn't, one of the lines that I pulled for that montage that we didn't end up using was like, oh, 50 quirks for a soggy dollop like that. And it's like, well, now I don't know what you're talking about. What's yeah. a quirk? What's a soggy dollop? Did yeah. you always think the nerf herder was an animal? I, I mean, I, I thought know. that the animal was a nerf. Oh, and like a herd. Right. Herded so, yes. nerf. No, you're right. No, nerf I just wanted to make sure that I. Oh, okay. I would, but I, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't the only one. Like, it was established that a nerf herder is like no, no, a dog, a, a and nerf, I was thinking like I nerf thought it was a herder. Bird. And well, it is. Well, yeah. 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 That too. Uh, bear, no, the, the, bear, I, I misspoke. Nerf would be the animal. The nerf herder would be one okay. who herds nerfs. I'm not playing gotcha. I just want to make sure that I've not been living in my own pocket universe over here <laughs> where. <laughs> Where there's an animal called a nerf herder. Yeah. And I, no, it's a nerf herder. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. A herder of nerfs. Herder so of nerfs. I almost, I almost looked into the abyss there for a second. <laughs> so, That's a, is uh, the company Nerf named after the animal Nerf? Uh, maybe. That wouldn't surprise me. Mm. It's it's nerf or nothing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, you tell us. That's a, yeah. <laughs> too much. Too much words in this. Oh because no! It's it's constant to the point where it becomes ridiculous. It's almost just shoveling lore into a furnace like yeah. the Predator yes. City yeah. has. Yeah, we don't learn anything from it because it's all nonsense. Like, what are Southie's scabs? Like, well, I still don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Well, let's keep going. It rushes past all the cool stuff you'll actually want to see and explore, so sure that it can some. just do Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Porkins. Uh, what you guys are missing is the father reveal. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Your mother never told you. You already knew. <sighs> yep. Really set myself up for that one. So put on your fanciest waistcoat and top that off with your most ridiculous hat for an ambitious project that made sure to do every dystopian earth trope, all of the steampunk things, and as much social commentary as possible. We're about to lose our American deities. <laughs> may very well be. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But forgot to tell us you can. <laughs> so that is the part of the movie that makes me want to punch it in the face. Oh, really? Um, just 
I, I get doing all the social commentary, but I was telling um, I was telling Joe because this movie spends so much time where the, the, there are just people staring, and it's they might as well be staring directly in the camera. If they're so smart and they're smart enough to make those hand screens, how could they have not protected this Earth? And like it's like someone's looking into the camera, yep. office yeah. style, and that was the part that bugged me. I told Joe, I was like, if this movie was a real person, it would be constantly telling you that it's not on social media. <laughs> That's yeah. the kind I took, of movie I took a Facebook break. Yeah, this is <laughs> like, I don't have a TV. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, this is the I don't even own a TV. You're like, actually, I'm vegan of movies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 There's a whole bunch of it. It's pretty nonstop. There is so much of the, because I mean, obviously, like nuclear war, it is a, a big, it's sort of an anti war screed by the end. And there, there is so much of just like a single ca- character looking at camera, like, why can't people just work out their differences <laughs> without like, fighting? With, uh, says a person sitting on top of a giant city that eats other cities. Municipal Darwinism, Joe. Get on board. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yep, you're right. Let's go. Smug. Right, all together. But forgot to tell a story you can follow with characters you actually care about. So you probably forgot to see it. Aw, oh, man. Now we're never going to find out if the Shanguanese, anti-tractionist, and municipal Darmus can coexist. Or what any of those words even mean. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Hermione Danger. Do you want to know how I got these scars? Glower of London. Sky Captain and the World of Taekwondo. <laughs> yeah. Previously on The Walking Dead. Good one. <laughs> London crawling. People falling. Oh, so much falling. So much falling. I didn't falling. notice this, but when, when, <laughs> this is this is great. I spent probably 20 minutes <laughs> tracking People falls. People falling. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I guess this is when you get a production designer to direct your movie. They're like, what if it's like, it's got 18 levels of people I mean, it's, falling. It's very dynamic action. Yes. Yes. People I mean, falling. as an action movie, it kind of kicks ass. Like, there's a lot of really cool spectacle in it. There is. That, that really great. won me over. Yeah. If there was any shred of the story to cling on to, this would have been These a actual names good movie. from the movie. Oh. Thaddeus Valentine. Bevis. Bevis Pod. Herbert Melifant. A please, sir. A Beauregard <laughs> Pennyroyal was my father's name. A call me Nimrod. Nimrod <laughs> 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 That's the worst name I've ever heard. Mortal Engines! <laughs> Pause. Because I know is... everyone's going to think that one was mine, but I can't take credit for it. Because I talk about Mortal Kombat way too much. Um, so I just have to make sure. I don't even think I've ever noticed that. <laughs> oh! The commenters have. <laughs> okay. Okay. I reference Mortal Kombat a lot. Yeah, I feel like Scorpion and Sub Zero have come up in the writers' reviews. <laughs> a few times, especially on SJU. So I wanted to make sure that credit went where credit was doing. Then. All right. Holtby is just good at making things. He really is. Yeah. Why is everyone in the post-apocalypse so dang pretty? Where are my pasty subterranean incest cannon fodder at? Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Any chance to reference Fury Road, and I'm yeah. usually yeah. pretty into it. I love Fury Road. Well, well, a great example of world building that's unobtrusive. You get a total. You, you're very clear on what Mad Max's world is like. Bullet Town, got but it. There's not a lot of like, let's stand around and talk about Gas Town. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, yo, yeah, that's where the gas is. Yeah, <laughs> though it's pretty self-explanatory. It's good, there you go. <laughs> Fair. I get it. This, What's Gas Town? Well, but I mean, this, this you don't need This whole dozen to... quirks worth of pumpers yeah. at the Gas Town. <laughs> this what? isn't that complicated either. You don't need to make it so. Yeah. Taking a truck to go to the bullet farm. Got it. They grow simple. bullets. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Someone took the thing off course on the way to Bullet Town. Got it. Okay, follow it. But follow it's a choice it. to make it simple like that. They could have explained everybody's tubes yep. and like what what all the you know what's going on in a Morton Joe's hideout, and they just don't. Which was nice. Yeah, I appreciate it. They didn't have to explain all this to me either. I could have right. You could have just, just spent a little more time with Hester. They could have just been sweet, like sweet, sweet Hester. Balon, yeah. Greyjoy, and Hugo Weaving in London are evil. It took me. It was only the second time through the movie that I recognized that the is Lord, that the Lord Commander of London, oh. who he supplants, is Balon Greyjoy. Well, mm. uh-huh. what do you know? There you go. Hey, JT, do we have deleted scenes? Starring Scarface. Negasonic Teenage Scarhead. We have a lot of Stellan Scarface. Scar. Those are all mine. Almost all mine. I got really into the Scar thing. Dante Sheik. Ivanka Chomp. Oh, Dad, love that. I'm a Beavis. <laughs> Get out here, Beavis. <laughs> Academy. And. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Also, mine, I apologize. No, it's a great joke. It's just, does anybody jokes. know? Yeah. We, we were just worried that people don't know his name's Tom Natsworth. Yeah. Wait, is the joke that we just called it Mortal Engines? No, I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know what that is. Was there more to that? Uh, I don't did, know. 
Okay. That wasn't one of the... We had other fake names, but... Meh, whatever. Not much. Uh, just we didn't make Avengers. Robert... We didn't tell Robert to make a graphic that just says more Just make, just redo the logo, but make it your own. I didn't think we did, oh, but no. hey, Robert, <laughs> I'm sorry. If we so did. sorry, Robert. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. This is one of those ones where it was like, let's just let, let's just group together some clips, and because if we really get in the weeds of like this, here's the funny things about this character. It's like no one cares. You can't. Like no one knows no these characters. Cares. Yeah, and no one knows who they are. Like, I watched the movie twice, and I don't know these characters. Yeah, uh, the book readers know. <laughs> yes. I acknowledge that. but yeah. uh, outside of that, because honestly, we're not worthy. Is is uh, what was my, one of my favorite jokes on the page? But it was just like. No, no yeah, one even knows know his, his name, name is Tom. Tom I'm ninety percent sure when I said that to you, you went, "I hate you so much." I did. I did. It was a good joke. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's Mortal Engines, you guys. Or should I say, that's Mortal Engines? Uh, I have a question. I have, yeah. I have a theory on this, but I'm not sure. Why Tell is it? Us. Why is it called Mortal Engines? The cities all have engines, but are they they're mortal? Because it sounds cool. Is it? And I bet there's something in the book. Does it refer it? to the engine that's inside of us? I mean, like the, the we were the mortal engines guess, all along. Because in the beginning, you think it's gonna make sense because they're like we have to keep feeding the engine or London mm-hmm. stops. So it's like, oh well, the, then the, it could it is a mortal engine. It's going to be it's gonna die. But then that's not the movie has nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah, because I was trying to figure out if that's a metaphor or not. Because Mm. the other cities, like the little smaller cities, they do get eaten. So I guess that's the mortality of the city. But that's not the engine. That's the city. Yeah, as London comes, but the city's an engine. Is is Shrike a mortal engine? Oh, Oh. just blew my mind, man. Maybe that is it. I don't know. Maybe. I like that Shrike had nothing to do with the third act. I was Shrike, like, nothing. No, Shrike has really nothing to do with the movie. No, no. he's not. He's literally just like walks into scenes that are. Have, ah! <laughs> you know what? The only thing he, the only thing he ah! gets is the reveal that those two kids fell in love. Yes, yes. that's yeah. his big you purpose. Love you two are in love now. Go, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Mortal Engines, you guys. Um, oh. Stay tuned right here next week for uh, for another episode of Honest Trailers. We're doing um, Mortal Engines again. Yes. We're just uh, yeah, that's the twist. We're doing Mortal yes. Engines again. I hope I hope the fragile egos can survive next week's trailer. We yeah. shall see. Mm. See you guys next week. Bye.